y'all welcome back to my channel it's your girl Cicely Renee and I'm super excited that you are here if you are brand new I hope this content blesses you and you subscribe and like and share and those who have already subscribed welcome back I'm excited thank you for your support here we do all things faith-based and to be specific it is Christianity um, so we do Bible studies we do life style we do creativity um, and I have a ministry called the creative wellness project where we do arts right arts and crafts it's a creative arts ministry and I love it because I love creating and God is just such a dope creator and he created us in his image and so like why we should create too right and so what I like to do is introduce you know art activities for anybody anybody that can do these things and it's not not too detailed it is you know more about the process of creating right and so one of my favorite things to do is kind of like meditate while drawing right and so that's kind of what we'll be doing we'll be focusing on maybe a specific word or a phrase that God has been speaking to you about and while we create just kind of pray over what you're doing and ask God to talk to you while you're creating as well and um, and so one one of the things that I have been hearing from God is all about faith, right? Um, faith has been huge in the past couple of months for me, but I didn't hear it until just recently. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, you've been saying this all along. And I'm just like, okay, here we are. Here we are. Let's do this. Okay. Um, and so about a week ago or two weeks ago, I did post a video about faith. Um, and we talked about writing your faith story. And so I hope you guys go back to that video and check it out. And so we're still, well, in this video, we're still talking about faith, but you guys can choose your own word or your own phrase. And so I'm going to let you know the supplies that you need. So you're going to need a squeegee. You're going to need some tape, uh, washi tape, maybe um, acrylic paint. You're going to need a Sharpie um, and lots of paper towel because it gets messy. OK, and so I'm mixing a few different things in here. So we did a squeegee art activity last week. And so we're still doing squeegee art, but having adding a little more details. OK, um, and there's this this thing that I want to show you guys and you probably have already heard of it but I'll go into more detail while we're doing it um, but I just wanted to share you know testimony and just talk about you know faith um, one thing about me like I have been struggling with faith and so just knowing that I have these huge mountains and God keeps talking to me like you need to strengthen your faith and so like last week was all about mountains turning into plains and like God can do whatever if you just partner with him and so he reminded me again he's like yo you need to have faith and one of the things that stood out to me though was the fact that unbelief which is like no faith right um it's a sin and i was just like oh my eyes said Psh, okay let's figure this out because i don't want to be sinning you know i want to believe god and know that he will do what he said he will do and that he will you know show up and just like you know and i i that is something that i'm working on and i'm you know i'm doing my bible study i'm praying i'm believing and speaking you know to my situations letting them know how good god is and just like ah, uh, okay um and so that is something that i'm working through and so in this video we'll be talking about faith and all of that and so i hope you pause this video grab your supplies and meet me back over here in a few minutes all right all right so here are the supplies that you are going to need and so i would encourage you to have a couple sharpies because i messed up in the process and had to grab another sharpie and a marker to continue my activity but it all worked out it turned out to be super beautiful all right and so let's set this board up Thank you. 
So I'm sketching out what I want to have on my paper. And so I'm putting the word faith because that is something that I want to meditate on. I want to get it into my spirit, activate it, strengthen it, all of that. And so one thing to know is that you may not be able to see the lines after you put the paint on top so this is just you know kind of like the rough draft the first draft before you know the final draft so don't get upset if it does not come out the way you first you know planned it all right so part of our activity is called neurographic art and I'm reading from mensync.com and it says that neurographic art is a simple way to work with the subconscious mind through drawing. This creative method stimulates new neural pathways by combining art and psychology. Simply stated, connected neurons process information received, enabling people to interact, experience emotions and sensations, create memories, and enable learning. This art technique was created by a Russian psychologist, creativity entrepreneur, and architect named Pavel Piskarev in 2014. And one thing I really like about this technique is that it's free form, right? You're letting go, you're releasing, right? And that is something we have to do when we are in relation with God, right? We have to let go. We are so stuck on being in control. And God is just like, look, I am here. Let me lead you. Let me guide you. And let everything that is in you that is stressing you out, let it go. Trust me. He's like, have faith in me. So as you can see, I did a simple technique where I just drew wavy lines from one side of the page to the next and you want to make sure that you get it across the page you can add swirls you can add other shapes you can do more with this but I wanted to start off simple for those especially who have never done this before so I made sure to put this tape as close to the edge as possible I wanted to have a large space a large canvas um, and not a huge border if you will and so now I'm just like okay what colors am I going to use and so these are the ones that I chose a scripture that has been sitting heavily in my heart and I was reminded of it this past week is that it's Hebrews 11 verse 6 and without faith it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him and it's that first part that really got to me it's like without faith it is impossible to please him and I'm just like I want to live a godly life I want to do things but sometimes I do have really weak faith right and that can put a big wall up between you and God. So let's talk about it. It's so easy to say that you have faith, but living it out is where we have problems. You know, it's like we have to see the, the step in order for us to go. We have to know every single detail before we can make a move. And that's not faith at all. And I personally struggle with anxiety and panic attacks and I knew my triggers and they were definitely because I wanted to be in control and I needed to see what was coming and I was just not living in faith for a huge season of my life. So I remember, you know, many times in my life where I was just like, oh, I'm on a I'm taking the leap of faith or I'm on a faith journey. But the funny thing about it, which is not really funny, is that my faith was never in God. It was in myself and what I could do. And that's a big no-no because I can't do that much. And it will never be close to what God can do for me, right? Like, what? It's as if we think we can do God better than God, and that's just ridiculous, right? 
So I'm going to share some ways that I have been implementing, you know, faith strengthening activities so that I can totally surrender and rely and trust in God, right? And how to build my faith. All right, so the first one is to reflect on the past blessings and favor God has provided for you. If he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, why would he not come through for you again? So that's another way of saying count your blessings, right? Go back and reflect. So one of the things that was huge in my life was God's protection, okay? I can remember so many instances where God literally took the will, okay? So one day in Minneapolis, one winter day, it was super cold, right? And I was entering on a ramp to the freeway, but it was a curved ramp. And so you can't really see what's happening. And it was a one lane, right? Um, As soon as I hit that corner, I also hit black ice. And there were other cars that hit that black ice too, but they were stuck on the sides of the wall. They were on both sides. And I literally felt the car wheel being controlled by God or an angel, right? I dodged every single car and made it straight out of that one lane entrance ramp to the freeway and i'm like oh my god you are so good and then there was this other time when my mom told me i was on the shelves or the counter putting dishes up on the shelves and all of a sudden i guess the shelf broke and all the glasses just fell and she said they didn't even touch me they went right around me like it just like there was a you know field around me a force field (laughs) but I knew that was God. And so with instances like that and more, you know, if I'm entering a scary situation, you know, I can reflect on those days and just remember how good God was in protecting me. He sent his angels to protect me. And so I'm just like, okay, that gives me encouragement to keep going. That builds my faith. And to add to that point is to listen to other people's testimonies. My life changes. I get so blessed and I get so encouraged when I listen to other people's stories. And if you're like, how do I find or hear someone's testimony? Ask them. Ask them to share how they conquered something. Ask them to tell you how God has shown up and showed out in their lives, right? Have a conversation with them. The next way is to talk to God daily, all day, every day. Ask him how he's doing. Ask him how the world is doing. You know, just have a conversation. Build your relationship with him. Like the more you spend time with him, intimate time with him, you know, intentional time, you know, you're building that bond and you get to see him more and more in your life. Right. So like, for example, I always used to want to call someone and tell them what I experienced, what I was going through. I wanted to vent. I wanted to just, you know, spill everything. But I have learned over the years that I should not be telling everybody everything. Right. But also the most important thing is that God wants to hear that from you, from your mouth, from your heart. He wants you to initiate that conversation with him and to, you know, he wants to know that you trust him with that information. And so what I've been doing, like I'll go on a walk and I'm like scrolling. I'm like, who could I talk to? Who could I talk to? And then I'm reminded, God just tells me you can talk to me. And so I put my phone away and I'm just like, okay, God, this is what I'm dealing with. I need help with this, you know? And that just makes makes things more stronger it's so beautiful too because like he'll start he'll talk back with you right the next tip that i have is to think about things that are excellent and worthy to be praised and you're probably like "Mm hmm, what's worthy to be praised what's excellent and uh i got a secret for you god (laughs) god is worthy to be praised god is excellent you know think about all the amazing things that he's done 
praising him for just him being God, right? The God that created the heavens and the earth, right? That created you and me, the birds, man, the galaxy. Oh, God has created so much. And these trees, the nature, like just think about all this amazingness. Think about his compassion, his love, right? You're like, oh my gosh, God loves me. He calls me his child. That should encourage you and strengthen your faith. And the last tip that I have for you is to meditate on his word and his promises. And so when I read these scriptures, especially like, you know, Hebrews 11, that is called the hall of faith. And I'm just like going back, looking at their stories. Oh my God. And doing it not just once, but you, you if you want to strengthen that faith, you have to read it over and over, get it into your spirit, right? And it is it's gonna it's going to strengthen you it has to and one way to meditate on his word is through creativity as well so you see we are focused on the word faith and so i wrote the word faith and i'm highlighting it i'm thinking about it i'm meditating on it i'm thinking about scriptures i'm talking with god i'm praying we are just you know, abiding in each other. So what you can do is create something maybe before or even after, you know, you do a Bible study. Maybe there's something that has been on your heart and you're asking God to reveal whatever it is. And you do that while creating. You can paint, you can write words, you can doodle. Um, but you are releasing, right? You're letting go. You're allowing God to move through you um, and help you create something. It may not be like this masterpiece, but it is kind of like a love letter between you and your Heavenly Father. All right, so going back to the neurographic art, you want to draw the lines from you know top to bottom, left to right, you know, you want to swirl across the page. You can add circles, you can add shapes, but you want to make sure that it goes from edge to edge. So you want to add like a little arch and then color it in. So remember how you have like neural pathways. This is kind of like creating that. Um, and so you want to do that with every single little cross section. As I look at this painting slash, you know, artwork, um, I see all the lines, the connection points, and it just reminds me that our faith, you know, is definitely connected to God, but it's also connected to others. So faith is an action word, you know? Faith without works is dead. When you show up, when you take those steps, you are connected to other people. You are building relationships. You are, you know, God uses others for his glory, right? And so if you are not acting out in faith, then other people will not have that connection with you and God. Your faith will have you in the grocery store paying for someone's groceries. Your faith will have you teaching Sunday school to kids. Your faith will have you at a job that you never would have imagined yourself at, but the people there, they needed you. Reflect on times that other people's faith helped you, encouraged you to take that first step. What did they say? What did they do? 
You know, what was the outcome? How did you feel? Put that in a journal. So we are on a mission to build our faith, make it stronger, you know, and I hope that this video encouraged you. And if you have any questions or thoughts or comments, put it in the comment section. I would love to connect with you. Peace and blessings.